Hey everyone, Pyro to bring you my first ever at a glance review brought to you by AYBOnline.com. This week's Steam brought along the 2K game sale and along with it one of the biggest flops of 2011, Duke Nukem Forever. Well I know this game has been out for almost 5 years now and yes you've probably heard all, to, all there is to be about this game, I couldn't help but get in on the action even late to the game as it may be. All that being said, there is spoilers ahead. Duke Nukem Forever takes place 12 years later and Duke has become a worldwide icon. Players start off in Duke's home, amply named the Duke Cave, where he witnesses a broadcast stating that the aliens have once again invaded, though this time around appear peaceful at first. After a bit of progression, Duke is then attacked by the aliens after being ordered not to engage, but has to disobey to save himself, thus starting the story of revenge. On top of all this, Duke's babes are kidnapped by the aliens, further solidifying his need to punch, shoot, kick, and swear his way through another alien invasion to get them back. A few things have changed from the previous Duke Nukem 3D, this time around coming in the forms of health and weapons. Rather than the players having the ability to carry all the guns they find around with them, Duke is now limited to two weapons alongside their trip mines and pipe bombs. Health has also changed where instead of a health bar needing to be replenished by med packs or drinking water, players are now giving an ego bar that works similar to that of Master Chief's shield from the Halo series. Duke will only start taking damage after the ego bar is depleted and the bar can be increased by interacting with objects around the world, thereby boosting Duke's ego like he needs it. If you skipped over this game because of all the bad press you heard about it, you've made a great choice. All in all, Duke Nukem Forever is fun for a short time, but after a few short hours I found myself bored and unenthusiastic to continue through. Starting off with levels, levels are extremely linear and tedious. If you were able to sit through the extremely long loading times, you would be dropped into a level, met by some kind of puzzle or platforming piece, fight off of a wave of bad guys, greeted by another puzzle or platforming piece, maybe fight a mini boss and then head over to what can only be named as an exit where you would then be thrown into another loading screen. All this which could be done roughly in around 5 to 8 minutes based on your skill level. Well on a positive note, some of the puzzles or platformers are well executed. One of my favorites came in the form of a crane used to break down a wall where a player would then climb up the crane to then jump into their said hole. Lastly, let's talk about the humor of Duke Nukem Forever. The humor of Duke Nukem games is always what got me growing up, as it was never soft around the edges and we have all run into some of his catchphrases at one point or another. However, Duke Nukem Forever will make sure you never forget about those catchphrases whether you like it or not. It felt as if any sense of originality had been thrown out and replaced by as many fucks or shits or by repeating old, worn out phrases from previous games to the point where you would plead for them to stop. Finally, Duke Nukem Forever feels more like a weekend side project made in the garage of some frat boys rather than the crass, ass-kicking Duke of early generations. If you're interested in this game, my recommendation would be to wait for it to go on sale for nothing less than 80% off, and lastly, I'd give it 2.5 out of 5. Fun for a weekend, but it'll sit in your library and help boost your numbers for your showcase. Thanks for watching my video and make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you'd like to see more at a glance reviews by myself Pyro and be sure to hit that subscribe button here at AYB Online.